Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. In a second, you'll meet Jesse Ray Ermster, and he's going to show you how he went from donuts to Grammys, seriously. But on a more serious note, yesterday we lost the industry's leading icon and bright light, Al Schmidt. Al was somebody who stood for everything great. The artist he worked with, the standards that he required, the toughness that he always exhibited, and the support that he gave you if you were true and honest. He was always there for us, our award shows, being on the show as a guest. He got us Paul McCartney and then laughed when I came back and said, could you also get us Dylan? I mean, it's a mutual thing here. And uh, you just take care of yourself, please. Okay. And uh, we'll both go on forever. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that, that, hopefully that's true. I think it's that yeah, I, Well, true. you know what? We're going to leave a hell of a legacy. That's <laughs> for sure. We grew from him, knew from him. He could not have been more friendly to his wife, Lisa, son, Chris, other kids and grandkids, thank you for taking care of such an icon and more importantly for sharing. I have it on good authority that he and Ed Cherney met with Jesus this morning. Uh, apparently, the control room in heaven is not up to our standards, so he has put in a requisition and apparently Jesus has approved it. Uh, the boys are back together and uh, the music will continue. It's just going to come from another place. Al, God knows we love you, um, and so does the whole industry. We're all in shock, um, but we all understand 90 years of a great life. Uh, hit us up on our socials, like and subscribe, click notify, and now without further ado, and in honor of Al Schmidt, enjoy our interview with Jesse Ermster. Hey, dude. Woo-hoo! Thanks for having me. Yay. How we doing? Doing good. Where in Canada? Uh, born in Winnipeg, but I was raised in the Twin Cities. Oh, Thank got you. I was born in Montreal, but raised in Kentucky. Um, okay. So anyways, um, you know, one of the things that is um, fun for us is when you take your technical proclivities, which you have amazing skills, and you're not afraid to, one, have fun with them, push the envelope, share them differently, and so on and so forth, and you've kind of made a career out of that. It's because because what people don't understand, it's one thing to be gauche and open the door. That just gives you a shot to show what you can do. And then you got to nail it. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And something that I learned upon moving to Los Angeles what, four years ago was that there are a lot of people who are very good at getting the door open. <laughs> and I realized, I think I just needed to be bold and and kind of be myself and, and show the vibrancy and, and be a little bit flashy. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. here I am. Hello. Amidst mm-hmm. this crazy town with a million people mixing. Like, I would love to work for you. Let's, let's, let's go. But you had to back that up, though, once you got the shot, correct? Yeah. You know, once you're in the chair, it's, uh, you start sweating, the heat's on you, but you got to stay cool. You got to stay in it. And yeah. what was the first shot? Uh, the first shot was uh, uh, kind of a, a lack of results came from coming to LA and trying to get known. So I, I was trying to get hired at studios to climb my way up the ladder. And I decided to fill up my Jeep with a couple dozen boxes of pink donuts, like just pink boxes uh, with obnoxiously colored resumes taped to the tops of these boxes of donuts. And I'm going to bring them to every studio in the Valley. I'm going to ring the buzzer. I'm going to, you know, knock on the door and try to get in with these donuts and get some attention. Like I'm here (laughs) and it worked. I went all day. I was sweating profusely. And by the end of the day, uh, it worked. I got in at NRG. And even though at that point I'd been engineering for almost 10 years, uh, I was starting over. I was mopping the floor, interning and (laughs) cleaning toilets and doing the thing and, but learning. Fast forward a couple of years, uh, I was getting established as an engineer and kind of making friends with a lot of other producers and engineers around town. And I found myself in a situation where I was subbing in to engineer for Tyga at Nightbird Studios in West Hollywood. It was it was a big night. I I, you know I I kind of thrive on those situations. I get really excited. I'm pretty hyperactive. That got me in a lot of trouble as a kid, Mm -hmm. Uh, drumming on desks and all of that. The teachers. They, they weren't all about it. But uh, yeah, I got in with Tyga. We had a great flow going. And after a few hours, Mr. Kanye West walks in. 
Ooh. Yeah, he comes in and uh, starts playing us uh, some bits from his upcoming album at the time, which uh, would have been the Yandi album. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we hung out and just vibed all night. And I, I finally worked up the courage. I was like, I, I'll never forgive myself if I just don't at least ask. Well, if you don't right. ask, you don't get. That's right. Uh, but I didn't want to do it in the room. So I found a convenient time when he left the room to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, here I go. I might get punched. But I followed him down the hallway and cornered him at the end of the hall. I said, hey, man, uh, if you ever need any extra engineers, I would love to come work for you. I, I greatly admire what you're doing. I'd love to be a part of it. And he, he said, here was the moment. He stopped. He stared at me like this and it was like three <laughs> seconds of silence and i knew it was over like i'm fired i'm up i'm nobody i'm blacklisted he said okay give me your number and the following day they flew me to chicago we tracked there for a few weeks i jumped on his team uh, with a, a bunch of amazing guys and then we went to uganda we were recording <laughs> in africa and going on safari expeditions and wow. just like recording on the Nile river, looking out and seeing hippos and giraffes and we're making music and I'm living out my dreams. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. And, uh, yeah. What did, you, what, there. Did you put, what did you put in those donuts? I want that formula. <laughs> I'll bring you some. Oh, no, I don't want, I don't want me to get it to work <laughs> for you. <laughs> you know, once you do this for a while and I'm sure you're finding out yourself, you, you see those opportunities that come up and, and, and that demarcation line of do I step over it and take it or not? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, but you have to also know when to take the shot and when your skills are there and when the other stuff. And one of the things that you have done in your career, I just think in, you know, being hyperactive and also being a, a thirst for knowledge and so on and so forth. You know, you were dealing and, you know, messing around with television and film as another place to sharpen your skills and do things so that, you know, whenever whatever opportunity came up and I've watched the shows and looked at some of the stuff you've done. And I was like, Jesse did that. Oh, my God. Was that early an in interest level? Was that something that just came about because you're always curious? Where did that phase come? Yeah, uh, great question. It's, it's tough to piece together my varying <laughs> interests. I love it. I love it. That's good. And how it all pieces together. Um, yeah. So I come from a musical background. Uh, my mom is a songwriter, singer. Uh, and my dad was a traveling musician who became an early adopter of a, a sound tools rig, which became Pro Tools. And yeah. in Minneapolis, he kind of began his production career and, and mixing as well as composing and, and working with various different types of artists. So I, I always had that t- tool set, you know, growing up with those influences and having a studio in the house where the drums were always mic'd up and the, the guitars were there and the amps were plugged in all the time. Yes. And here we, you know, we had the MIDI instruments here. You can learn how to make strings and make strings sound cool. And uh, so, so when I came out here, it was almost out of necessity that I, I pushed myself as a composer to get work to survive while I pursued my true passion to be a mixer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. once, once the mixing thing, this was after the Kanye uh, stuff happened, I came back home and met with some management teams and leveraged that into just moving solely into mixing. And once that happened, I kind of stopped doing the composing and engineering gigs and, right, and right. that. I also played in wedding bands and was a part of this great <laughs> uh, company called Audio Test Kitchen out here. My friend Alex Awana runs that. And mm-hmm. but, uh, along this whole time, I was doing a lot of ear training with him while developing that site. And so all of these things were kind of just sharpening, sharpening the, uh, the tool, the toolkit, right? Do yeah. people say that? Sharpening the toolkit? Yes, We're going so with it. Your jewels are something different in California. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, one of the things that stuck out is, is you'll mix any damn where. I mean, like you've been mixing on airplanes, uh, Ubers, like <laughs> every place. And those songs are getting almost no ch- changes. H- how do you do that? I want to be able to do that. <laughs> well, every single scenario is different. So I think, uh, the first situation would have been, I think you're referring to when I was mixing Burn a Boy featuring, uh, yeah. the band, the name, uh, the Gumbody. Yeah. Uh, Gumbody was on an airplane and then we, you know, we got the revision back when we landed and I, on the Uber ride back home from London, uh, we made the final 
we made the final revision in the car. Uh, and then most recently we did Burner's most recent album. Uh, and I was mixing on the beach with AirPods because our house was being renovated. So we moved out uh, for a couple of months and it's just kind of what I was stuck with. Um, I think though that uh, to give the technical answer, following the reference as a guide is, is just immensely important. Uh, I'm not the guy that like trashes the ref, like, you know, forget about your ref, you know, it's my way of the highway. Like, no, I, I think that the references has usually, at least in my experience, been really well thought out. And we have to give producers more credit than I think we do that they have solid intentions and what they do is, I mean, what they did is what, what they want ultimately. Right. So I, a lot of the work and a lot of my mixing style is taking that and knowing how much to do and knowing how to finesse the mix to, to get a commercial and, and a really, you know, shiny sound, but while also retaining a lot of their, their character. So, so by listening to their reference on AirPods, I'm, I'm still able to, I know where they're going for. Uh, I'll, I'll just refine it from there. And I also think you're, you're speaking to two things that are now a feature. They used to be kind of aberrational, but they're really a feature. The reality of it is, is everybody's portable. If you can't, people who are making contemporary records have to have the ability to be portable. You're, you're moving, you're doing things that even, in, and particularly as we open back up, because it was years ago, we used to, I think we started with Alex the Kid. We started to hear about mixing while in transit and somebody's in a different city and somebody's in a different place. And now everybody on an airplane or a tour bus. So, so that's one thing. The other thing, too, that I've learned in, in, in we, is that the idea is a mix is kind of an ongoing thing that's passed from baby to baby to baby or from father to father. And it starts with the ref. And then you have this kind of guide that you want to build upon not destroy and build back up that seems to be more and more of a feature today is that your is that your sensibility yeah absolutely and there are there are definitely times when i'm really stubborn about it too because i i feel that the record should be elevated and should go somewhere and sometimes other members of the team are not feeling the same way mm -hmm. uh, but i am always telling my assistant and other people it's like hey we always get that first mix. Like that's, that's my shot to make my statement and suggest where I think it should go. And then when they hit me back and say, let's, you know, let's revert closer to the reference. Happy to do it. Like, I'll do it every single time, but you always get one chance to just like, here's, here's a little bit of my flash. You know, there's my fader throw at 33 seconds in that I think should be there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, uh, the uh, Burma boy record is flawless. It's, uh, it's really, really good. I recommend everybody go listen to it. And um, I forget the single. Dumb Boy, is that the single? Uh, there are a few singles now. We're, we're toward the end of the album cycle. So I, I think like half well, the song. That, is uh, <laughs> that song in particular is my favorite. And uh, can you go through the process on, on that, uh, on, uh, of your mixing? Because um, there's not a, a mixing tool you don't take advantage of. You know, like you mm -hmm. got... Your panning is, uh, by the way, is is a hook. It's really good. Your panning is good, and then and then the way you, the way you manipulate, manipulate space is really good. Can can for the audience? Can you describe your 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 philosophy on it, and then and then give us a, a little quick how to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm glad you brought up space. That's uh, really really cool that that resonated because that's that was a major. Uh, thing that I wanted to push for with mm -hmm. Burna uh, yeah. this time around. Because we, we did the African Giant record, which the whole mixing for that was just match the reference mixes and just give it a little polish. Uh, but on Twice as Tall, we had this a little more trust built up. We were able to... Uh, I was able to build all of the dry vocals into what the vocals would become. I was able to create the space for all the instruments. Uh, and so with the depth, I, I think about it the way that my friend Greg Scott uh, talks about depth and space. I love Greg. I love Greg, man. He, he's a friend and a mentor and genius. Same here. Uh, but he, he talks about depth and, and cohesive ambience and yeah. by looking through a lens. So as the listener, if I close my eyes and listening to a song, I'm looking through a lens into this alternate reality. Uh, so you, we have to ask ourselves these questions like, are, are the, the instrumentalists and the vocalists, are they in that same environment? You know, so we got to think about reverb that way. We got to think about ambience, texture. Like, are, are they sitting in a grimy cave with water dripping down from the rock ceiling? Or are, are we out in outer space? Like, what is this? And it, 
it always strikes me as very bizarre when I hear a mix that's, you know, maybe we have vocals pushed way back and we have a dry acoustic guitar way up front. Uh, it, it's something disconnects and I have a, a tough time being immersed in that. So it, it's something I really focus on. Uh, and the other part of getting depth for me is the way that the decay, hap- uh, the way that you're able to dial in decay in the low end. So like a lot of people think about the punch and the knock of a kick. And I think that the sub region and the length of it is such an important part. And it's so un, it's so forgotten about, you know, you got your, uh, but where's your, uh, uh, and does it time out to, until the next beat or does it time into the kick? Are your speaker cones pushing air and tempo with the music? Is it complementing the song? Is it, uh, is there a bounce, you know, are you dialing in your compression to be a rubber band to just like to elevate the song and just create this, this thing? Cause people will know it'll be subconscious, but they'll feel it and they'll, they'll groove and it'll be yeah. so much better. And so I, that's, that's what I try to go for. Uh, a friend of mine with the initials MJ said that, um, and this changed my life about 20 years ago. He said that it, it's not the be- when you start a note that, that gives you the groove. It's where you end the note that gives you the groove. And, and and that's that's he said that's why he did it all those little eh, oh, oh, oh. all those just 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 to enhance the, the 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 space between two notes to give it a groove. I thought that was brilliant. Absolutely, because that's what he would do. He would literally be like a drummer's left hand. He's adding in ghost notes that just yeah. and sometimes they're like, "What did he just do a dotted sixteenth there?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you listen so, to his, yeah. when you listen to his vocals. You can place the snare on his snaps, which he records, and you can place the kick on where, he, where his foot is. Like, like a lot of those were recorded on a drum platform, so so that uh, so that the, the his his stomping was captured too. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. God, that is brilliant. So, yeah, Jesse, tell us about your your no desk movement. That uh, yeah. Given the way you think about music, which, which I love, by the way, one of my greatest compliments is when I was partnered with Maurice White, we were coming home from something and um, he was just looking at me and he kind of spoke in a whisper and he said, man, you listen like a musician. <laughs> I was like, mic drop. I don't need anybody to ever say anything else to be musical. All the validation I need. Yeah, but but. All the stuff you're talking about is kind of like the way I like to listen and dive down and find out what's happening, what's going on with the space. What like I could just do a textbook course on Dr. Dre's production. Who goes? Oh, oh my I god! I would take that course. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I, I want to take that. So, but but people who think like that often think outside the box with those thoughts. So, did no desk movement. Explain. No desk movement. It might be easier to just show you. Uh, yeah. So if I. Take- if I kind of back up here, you can see my setup and I'll try to get way out of the way. I've got speakers and, some, you know, treatment, tube, tap, tra- tube traps, but uh, nothing going on there. No desk. And I just use this lap desk. It's like, yeah, and it sits in my lap. And basically I was using this, these just massive Argosy console things with racks of gear in front. You get all these reflections, you get comb filtering, you get this just really, really inaccurate listening environment and it was a combination of a having kids and not having the time to mix inefficiently anymore <laughs> with the limited time especially during covid where it's like we can't have child care and so like when i come into the studio i need to know that my monitoring is right i can't be running to the car I can't be doing all that stuff uh so i wanted to just eliminate the desk Ooh. and the results instantly you know if you do measurements before it's like Ooh, peaks and valley it's like just it's crazy and now uh it's beautifully accurate man it really helps that's 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 really okay. I love it. that's great how many kids by the way uh one and one on the way in a couple months two girls oh, congratulations yeah. good thank you yeah hey, that's fabulous that's fabulous so um, juicy i feel like i've known you long enough to um to tease you um <laughs> You love the word glued. Everything in your life is glue. Glue this, glue that, glued this. I glued this to that. I glued the, the vocal to the track. I glued the compressor with the stereo. But what the fuck is glue? How can I make glue part of my, part of my skill set? Do you get it at Home Depot? It's so funny you mentioned that because I was using liquid nails all weekend to 
<laughs> put together a bunch of stuff at the new studio build. And uh, no, that, that definition of the term glue is changing for me right now because I have been a bus compression guy, master bus compression guy forever. Mm-hmm. And in the last year, I have been really leaning away from it and hardly ever using one. So I, I it, and then the question becomes, how do you get a mix to glue together without that and without a limiter? Because I'm not going for like crazy loudness very often either. Mm-hmm. Although sometimes you need it. Glue. I think glue is, could be defined by kind of what I talked, what I spoke about earlier. Uh, am I able to get lost in this place when I'm listening to this song? Does it take me there? You know, is it, am I going to feel something? Am I going to get those goosebumps on my arm? That's why we listen to music. That's why I listen to music. Like I, I want that feeling. It's the greatest high in the world. Uh, if it's not glued, it's disconnected. I'm not there. I'm frustrated. I, and then I have to tweak forever to get it. And then I go crazy mad scientist with my no desk. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, give it, but, but take all that and let's go a step further. So sure. does, is technology something that you keep inundated with that you know what you want to use and what you want to stay away from? Do you have every plugin known to man? How does your brain, given you're a, you're a new dad and going to be a newer dad, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I can tell that efficiency and things you can rely on are really important, so you can get to your musicality. So how do you deal with the technology that's constantly evolving in our space? Yeah, I honestly I rely on my assistant Noah <laughs> to keep me fresh with a lot of that because because uh, yeah we have pretty much all the plugins and we share the licenses and we have like a remote setup. So he has all the same tools at his studio and, and we kind of work together that way remotely. Mm-hmm. And, but he'll hit me and be like, dude, check out, you know, the mm-hmm. new Mick DSB or the, the new waves thing. And, right. and, mm-hmm. uh, then we dig in and, and that's a cool way to do it. But I, I, I come in after hours after, you know, we put our daughter to bed and I'll come in and then I'll get to play with a mix that maybe I was, happy with the day before and we'll see if things are still cool and once i get a mix to the point where you know okay we're in which we're in is a thing i adapted from michael brower like you know you're yeah, yeah. you're combing through you're you're just trying to get there you, and finally at, at the point where you know it's sendable like we made it. okay we're in we're through we're through the woods once i'm in then i like to get weird i like to automate then i'll pull in things i'll try stuff and that's now you know, sequentially where in happens after glue. Is, is that correct? It's glue first and then we're in. I think it's the same thing, right? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm asking the master. Hey, <laughs> I hope. Well, then let's ask Dave. <laughs> That's not me. Man. No, I, 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 I sometimes think when I glue, I just increase the mud, I think. I, I mm. don't know. I don't know. I'm not a real good glue guy. <laughs> um, but, Dave, um, you are you are, and uh, so do you think of glue as like saturation? Because I I think my favorite mixes from you are the really clean stuff. Like you did some Kirk Franklin mixes in the mid two thousands that were just crazy. You went like, the best back. gospel mixes I've ever heard. Uh, I still you. reference that stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I I I I, I can actually say as an artist, I loved him. He uh, he was yes. a breath of fresh air. Yeah, uh, going back a couple of paragraphs. Um, the reason we have so many plugins, I don't think I don't. A lot of people think that we're just we're just um, you know we're just excessive. But but when I get a when I when you and I get a um, something to mix. We pull up the we pull up their version and and we have to have all the plugins they have in order to uh, recreate their mix where they left off and so everybody has different plugins so so we have to have and I found too I know your assistant knows this but any free plugins you got to get them because you're gonna be you can be finding them in a mix <laughs> somewhere yeah. in the next two weeks you know. And uh, so that's why that's why that that's why that's that way. And then then and then another reason is I just love it. I love to have all that stuff. Yeah, it makes Man. me feel important. <laughs> Absolutely. In your journey and your recommendations to other people, where does education lie? Uh, as far as formal education or just whatever. I think education can come any kind of way. So whatever way your definition of education would be, because I don't think it's always formal. 
that gets somebody to where they need to go. But but what's your perspective? Yeah, I I'm kind of all over the board because I I used to teach at uh, MMI, which is Minneapolis Media Institute, which is Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis's old studio, Flight Time, wow. Wow. where a lot of the songs you mixed <laughs> were recorded. All of the the goddesses of pop from the '90s. <laughs> Oh, and Mariah and Whitney and uh, Janet. And, um, yeah, so that gave me a totally different perspective because I, I didn't come from that background. I grew up just making records and learning from my dad. And, mm-hmm. and you know, him and I worked together on a good amount of stuff. Uh, I, I believe now it, everybody has a different form of absorbing and soaking up information and, and different sources of inspiration. I think it's really unique to the, for me, it was always really unique to the individual that's teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I think the biggest message would be just latch onto somebody you identify with or that you look up to. There are, you know, this, this program obviously is one of them Mm -hmm. and Dave's the goat. (laughs) Find somebody you latch onto and, and just uh, try to obtain as much as you can. I I think though, uh, to kind of, angle this a different way if i were to suggest like one of the best approaches to maybe breaking into the industry now for a young person Mm -hmm. i would say get to a big music city and uh, assist under somebody who is doing what you want to do i Mm -hmm. think that that is an overnight way like if you're able to make it happen i think that that mentorship is really really valuable and and don't and don't don't just go for um engineers go 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 try to work with producers also because yeah i would guess you and i learned as much from producers as we did from engineers i've <laughs> learned more from producers i'm like i dave i've heard you say this that i you know you're every time you pull up a producer's session you're you're taking tricks like how many into the layers were inspired by something you saw or that you pulled yeah. 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 I, I always really appreciated that that honesty and humility they're like Man, I, I no shame, no shame. Like admitting that I'm just, I'm pulling, I'm pulling, and I'm growing. I'm hungry. I'm hungry to take as much as I can. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't, we don't own our creativity. We borrow it, and we stand in front of greatness and, and absorb it and borrow it. Right. So, so, so. By the way, um, I, I I read an article on how you did the um, um, the uh, gum body, and um, it's all there. You, I mean, every little detail, you went into great detail. I, I highly recommend. Yep. Music tech. To, uh, I go read that interview. It's so good. I, I, in fact, I've got three or four questions from that interview alone, you know? <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah. That, that song was a crazy exercise in just obnoxious automation. It was like, I, at that point in my life, uh, which was a couple of years ago, I was just yeah, trying it to. It worked. It worked. I was trying to be as extreme with automation as I could. Like that was part of my identity at the time, and I've kind of, kind of calmed down a little bit mm. in that regard. Yeah, during during quarantine, I think we um, we 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 need more titillation. We need more changes. We need more movement in our in our in the music we would like, like like. Like if I hear a song with a tw- with a sixteen bar intro, I'm I'm gone after bar bar eight, <laughs> you know. And I think the way you're doing it is tailor made for 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 not only for now, but when we come out of quarantine, that's going to be the norm. And you do yeah, it really man. well. Thank you, man. Well, now we're going to see what you do with Banner's box. <laughs> um, I have high expectations. And Warm up here. That's right. Scratch together. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go left handed today, just to. Yeah, yeah. Throw, 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 absolutely. <laughs> throw curve balls back. All right, Dave, you ready to tee it up? Okay, my friend. <laughs> uh, you know, like, like, let's see how much you like me. So let me win, okay? I'm begging. I, I, I don't know what else to do. I haven't won one of these. There was one time when Herb had to leave for a second, and and I took I took the win. But other than that, <laughs> right, you ready? Yep. I got a, I got a fun one for you. Um, distortion. Andrew Mori. <laughs> Reverb. Liquid Sonic Seventh Heaven. Ooh. Man, yeah. <laughs> Man, pro, yeah. Pro version. <laughs> pro version. <laughs> yeah, pro version. No, not for me. Major or minor? Major that feels like minor. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna do like uh, like Steve Harvey does, and I'm looking for confirmation. 
<laughs> okay. Um, okay, we'll take that. Preamp. Oh, the, the Rascal Audio 2V. That was like the last preamp I had. And that was very cool. Too many words. Sorry. Baddest box. That's <laughs> no, fine. Bass. Chorus. Uh, High just pass. A- on just the top end? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. High pass. Um, background vocals. Spectre. Ooh, he's going for it, Herb. He's going for it. Mm-hmm. Outboard gear. The overstair modular channel. <laughs> Melodies. Melodies? Yeah. Mm. 12 dB fader throw. Mm. Sorry, say that again. 12 dB fader throw. Wow. Mm. He's good, Herb. I'm struggling here. I mean, everybody's about kick snare 808. Those melodies get buried. That's the stuff. We push it up. Yeah. Let it be heard. That's what sells. No melodies. It's just an instrumental. Um, favorite compressor? AR1. Kush. Yeah, I love that. Too. I love that little knob. <laughs> <in the bottom. laughs> um <laughs> Your, your most annoying frequency that you always try to get rid of? It, lately, it's 10 and 11K. Like, I just don't know what's going on. <laughs> 10K. <laughs> um, I got no more, Herb. I got no more. No, I knew that. I was just waiting for you to... I was, I, I was going to bring up the old prophylactic joke, but it's just too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Herb, Herb, you got to throw out some batter's box questions. Oh, well, see, I I'd do batter's boxes it. on the other side of the component having to do with creativity and your management and branding and what you're going to do. And that brings... That would up, be fun, Herb. That brings a whole That'd other... Side for, you, for us to do a yeah. show like that. The, the, the yeah, Herb, I would love to pick your brain on that stuff. Like, oh, so we, we've got to get some dinner past... Once COVID's done. Any, anytime. Any, anytime. And and I'm putting out a series of content called Manager Minutes and other kinds of things because awesome. that, for, for my perspective and I think our perspective, the show is about the 180 of the process. You can learn to roll off 2K and and be have offensive body odor and not get any place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so stuff, and particularly as it's changing, there's so many... Le- business constraints that are changing. There's legislation that, are you a gig worker? What happens? What do you do with streamers now? And as much as you have to be a hybrid as a creative person, you also have to add in some of that context of of knowing where to go and putting the two together really makes you more powerful. So anytime we can do it privately and we're going to do it as part of the show. And I would suggest this, we have a lot of places where people want us to either help provide folks to speak to people or spend 20 mm-hmm. minutes or 30 minutes. If you're ever up for that, um, we have some right. really august institutions that we would do it in. Um, Love that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, we'll include you. What's in the future, Please. man? You're hot. You're, you're bopping. You're rolling. What are you excited about that's coming up that you can talk about? Uh, I can't talk about it. <laughs> that's, <what I'm> talking. <laughs> that's the right answer. <laughs> I am excited to continue to make records with great people. And to see where things are going to be headed, uh, I feel like we're moving into a really different landscape. Yeah. Uh, music. This is going to be a very exciting decade, we, and absolutely. we are just at the very, very, very head start of that. And it's great, man. I, f- I feel like I won the lottery. You're like I'm on Pensado's place talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's just so great. One, one of the but, things that um, I also think is a feature, which you um, indicated. We early on, Dave and his career, and then when I came up with the idea for the show, we really were just open source early. Mm-hmm. And you know what? We'll share warts. We'll share everything. We'll, and it's funny watching it go from how dare you do that to now everybody does it. To now there's an excitement about engaging and realizing the community. And look, we were in a place in a business that grew during the pandemic. How mm-hmm. frightening is that? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. And with the responsibility of caring about people who got hurt by the pandemic. So our obligation is to take this and steward it and do great shit with it. That's, that's how I look at it, man. So, you know, if you, if you're talking to the audience, give them the one piece of advice you, you think is, is germane to them. Besides listen to Pensada's place. (laughs) 
<clears throat> treat people well. <laughs> uh, be a lover. Mm -hmm. uh, be conscientious of how your actions affect other people and how you can serve. How, how can you best serve your clients, your friends, your family, artists, producers, A&Rs? How can you be of service instead of, you know, a taking mentality? Like, what can I get out? Oh, I'm going to meet this guy at this party. And I'm going to, no, man. Like, what can you bring? How, how can you help these records come out better? Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Um, yeah. And we're, we're in great hands. If the future of music is Jesse Ray Ernster. And just the fact that I have a friend that I can go, Jesse Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Ray. It's such a cool thing, man. Uh, thank you, man. It's such a cool thing. I'm an admirer and a fan, your contributions and your cerebral approach. I like people who don't have to cut a corner to be who they are and actually embrace who they are and help enlighten us. And you're every bit of that, man. So cool. So cool. Dave, take this home, bud. Okay. Um, man, uh, I kept thinking during this interview, uh, which is, by the way, one of my favorite that we've had so far, um, that... I don't know if Jesse knows what he's doing or if it's just part of his skill set, but he's preparing himself to enter the exit from quarantine. When 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 we get away from quarantine, there's going to be a big explosion of of, of new type music, new type sounds. It, the way music sound when we left 2020 is not going to be anywhere close to the way music is sounding when we hit 20 uh, somewhere in 2021. And, and so. Um, be prepared. Study him. I, I'm, 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 I'm blown away by how he works with the things that are the most important, in my opinion. And that's groove, feel, emotion, energy, vibe. And if you got that, you can mix a polka song. You can mix a Kanye <laughs> song. You can mix anything you want to mix, and you're gonna have fun doing it. Love you, my friend. We'll see you soon, and you guys too. I'll talk to you later. Yeah.